how we left David at the end of the last story. Saul had tried to kill him by throwing a spear at him. And then when that failed, Saul tried to get the Philistines to do his dirty work for him, promising David could marry his daughter Michal in exchange for killing 100 Philistines. Saul felt sure that David would fail in this task and be killed in the process. But instead, because God was with him, David succeeded. He was also a really popular leader among Saul's soldiers. So let's go into the book to find out about David's escape through a window. Saul still wanted David dead, so he sent instructions to all his attendants and also to his son Jonathan. But Jonathan really liked David. They'd become good friends. So instead of killing him like his father wanted, Jonathan warned David about Saul's plans. Jonathan told David that he must go and hide. As soon as David was safely hidden, Jonathan took the opportunity to speak to his father, Saul. Jonathan reminded Saul how David had succeeded in all that he had been asked to do by him as king. How glad Saul had been when David had been the one to defeat Goliath, the Philistine giant and how all David had done had, in fact, benefited his father. Jonathan pointed out to Saul that David had not wronged him, so why would he want to wrong an innocent man? Saul listened to his son and agreed that he was right, and promised that David would not be harmed by anyone acting on Saul's behalf. David was able to come out of hiding, and things went back to how they had been before. God loved David, Jonathan loved David, and Saul couldn't hurt him. Then once again war broke out between the people of Israel and the Philistines. David went out and fought against them and led the men under his command so courageously that the Philistine army all ran away rather than fight David. But once more Saul became very jealous of David and completely forgot his promise to Jonathan. Saul sent men to David's house that he shared with his wife Michal. Saul's daughter. The men were instructed to watch the house and then kill David in the morning. Michal loved David and when she saw her father's men she warned her husband. My father has sent men to kill you. If you don't go now then tomorrow that is exactly what they will do. You need to leave now tonight. Run for your life. Michal came up with a plan. Together they tied some sheets together and David used them to climb out of the window and then he ran and managed to escape. In the meantime, Michal took a statue and put it in their bed. She covered it with the bed sheets and then found some goat hair that she arranged on the pillow where David's head should have been. In the morning, Saul's men came into the house and demanded to see David. I'm sorry, you can't because he is ill, Michal replied. The men went back to Saul and reported this to him. Saul was cross. He told his soldiers to bring David and his bed to him so that he could kill him himself. When the men went back to David and Michal's house, they entered the bedroom and realised they had been fooled by a statue and some goat hair. So they took Michal back to Saul. Saul was furious. God loved David, Michal loved David and Saul couldn't hurt him. In the meantime, David head headed to where God's prophet Samuel was living. When Saul discovered this, he sent some men after David. But do you know what happened when he got there? They saw Samuel and David worshipping God. And instead of arresting David, they joined in. So Saul sent a second group. And guess what? The same thing happened. And again with a third group. In the end, Saul himself went. He joined in too. God loved David, the people loved David, and Saul couldn't hurt him. So, Saul is still on a mission to get rid of David, giving David every reason to be afraid. But did you notice what happened in today's part of the story? God used three different people to help David and protect him. Two of them part of Saul's own family. First there was Jonathan, Saul's son, then Michal, Saul's daughter, and then finally Samuel, God's prophet. These people loved David 
and David trusted them and God put them in David's life. When we're afraid, we can look to people who love us and who we trust. This may be someone at home, a teacher at school, or a trusted friend. Now I'm going to say a prayer, and if you want to make it your prayer, please say Amen at the end after me. Dear God, thank you for all the people who have placed in my life that I love and can trust to help me when I feel afraid. Amen. <laughs>